Hello, good morning friends. Welcome back to your favorite channel Code One Digest. Today, in this video, we will learn about distributed tracing design pattern for microservices. I will explain you what is distributed tracing design pattern, where to use it, and what are the advantages of this design pattern. I'll also give you a real world example of this design pattern. So stay tuned. It is going to be very exciting and very informative video for you. So watch this video till end. Friends, in the previous video, we discussed about performance matrix design pattern. Can you explain what is performance matrix design pattern all about? Provide your answer in the comment section of this video. If you have not seen that video, so please go and watch that video. The link is provided on your screen and also given in the description section of this video. So for more information, go and watch the previous video on Code One Digest channel about performance matrix design pattern. What you need to understand, Susan, is that everyone has an agenda, okay? So friends, here is the agenda of this video. I'll give you introduction of distributed tracing design pattern. Then I'll show you a real world example of distributed tracing design pattern. Then I'll also show you a difference between logging and distributed tracing as the people get confused between these two things. Then I'll explain you the usage of distributed tracing design pattern, where to use it. Then we'll understand the benefits of distributed tracing design pattern. Then I'll also show you what are the different types of distributed tracing design patterns are available. Right friends? And then I'll touch about our next video on health check design pattern. So stay tuned and watch this video till end. It is going to be very, very exciting and very informative for you guys. Okay? Friends, before we proceed in this video, I request you to subscribe this channel to grow Code One Digest family. Friends, I'm creating a lot of quality videos on programming, coding concepts, design pattern and design principles, cloud and container technologies, but I'm not getting subscribers. I request you to like, share and subscribe this channel so that I can grow a Code One Digest family. Thank you. So let's begin. Okay, friends. Now let's start with the distributed tracing design pattern. This is the third design pattern in observability design pattern category. Distributed tracing is the process of tracing every single request from the point of origin up to all the services it touches by analyzing the data. Every request will have a trace ID, timestamp and other useful metadata information. Distributed tracing is a technique that addresses logging information in microservice based application. A unique transaction ID is passed through the call chain of each transaction in a distributed topology. One example of transaction is user interaction with a website. The unique ID is generated at the entry point of the transaction. The ID is then passed to each service that is used to finish the job and written as a part of service log information. It's equally important to include a timestamp in your log messages along with the ID. The ID and the timestamps are combined with the action that a service is taking and the state of that action. Distributed tracing is a method of tracking application requests as they flow from front-end device, front-end user interface to the back-end services and databases. Developer can use distributed tracing to troubleshoot requests that exhibit high latency or errors. Let me explain it to you so you'll understand. Okay friends, now let's understand distributed tracing in microservice architecture. In typical microservice architecture, one microservice calls other microservice and they are interconnected in form of mesh network, what you see on your screen. That inventory service is calling the payment service, profile service is calling the payment service and inventory service and so on. So many services are calling each other and the call may start from one service and ends at other service. So in order to trace the journey of a user, we need a distributed tracing design pattern. We need a trace ID so that we log it along with microservices logs. And then in a log aggregator tool like Splunk or log analysis, we can find, we can search using this trace ID. So it will give me a log from multiple services with a trace ID. And then we can analyze how a user journey has begun and gone through multiple services and ended with a success or error. So this is the logic behind distributed tracing design pattern where in microservices, a transaction can span through a multiple 
services. So there we need trace ID so that we can trace the user journey across multiple services using a unique trace ID. Right friends with me? Wow. Okay friends, now let's understand the microservices with and without distributed tracing. As we just discussed that in microservice architecture, the call may span into a multiple services. So in order to trace, in order to debug the flow user journey, it is very difficult without a unique trace ID, how a journey went through to multiple microservices. What had happened in which service it was failing. So if you see in the left hand side, it's all mesh architecture and you're not able to trace which call is going where. It's all jumbled up. But if you have a unique trace ID used across the multiple services, so that trace ID can be used in a log aggregator tool to search all the traces of the user journey across the multiple microservices and we can easily figure out where the problem is or where there is a latency issue, which service is taking more time or where the problem is, what has happened between service A and service B. So unique trace ID is very helpful in logging and debugging the issue when your calls span through a multiple microservices. Right friends, I hope this diagram helps you understand the importance of distributed tracing design pattern. So in a right side of diagram, you can see that it is highlighted with a yellow dots and those connections. It's saying that how the call has gone from service one to service two to service three and so on. So that with the unique trace ID, we can trace the complete journey of a user and then we can debug it easily. Right friends with me? Oh wow, that is really, that's amazing. Friends, now let's understand a difference between a distributed tracing and just a logging. Many times people get confused between these two things that logging is synonym of distributed tracing or distributed tracing is similar as logging, but that's not a case. There's always a confusion between tracing and logging. Distributed tracing and logging can be used in an application to debug the issue and improve the areas where needed, but they are not the same. Logging is a process of printing the information or error from an application to analyze what happened within that application. Whereas distributed tracing is a process of tracing a request from the first microservice until the last one it travel to find out where the failure has happened. The idea is to start with the logging in all the microservices and once the system grows complex, then tracing must be added across the services. The matrix have to be monitored. The three things are very important here. Logging, tracing and monitoring. These are the key pillars of observability of any system. Right friends? What the hell are you talking about? Now let's understand distributed tracing design pattern within real world example. In microservice architecture, a request can travel across multiple microservices to build a response and send it to the user. If something goes wrong in some service, it is extremely difficult to pinpoint where it goes wrong. Here comes the application of distributed tracing design pattern. Distributed tracing is the process of tracing every single request from the point of origin up to all the services it touches by analyzing the data. Every request will have a trace ID, timestamp, and other useful metadata information. With this, we can see how long the request span across a particular microservice and also we can get the metrics to improve the latency. So in this diagram, you can see how the request is flowing from service A to service B and B to C and then so on. And then we can trace easily with the unique trace ID. And also it, that gives us the information which service has taken more time or less time in processing the request. So these are very useful information that in a whole journey of a user, which service is taking more time and where is the area of improvement or optimization, right friends? Friends, now let's understand distributed tracing design pattern with another example. And this example has the two main parts, the tracing library that all the service integrate with 
and a place to store and visualize the tracing data. We are choosing the Zipkin, a scalable open source tracing framework, developed it at Twitter for storing and visualizing the tracing data. Zipkin is usually paired with Pinnacle. Newton built the tracing library called Dist from a ground up, starting as a company hack day experiment. For our solution, we choose to match the data model used in Zipkin, which in turn borrows heavily from a dapper. A trace tree is made up of set of span. The spans represents a particular call from a client. It starts through a server receive, server send, and ultimately client receive. For example, the call and response between service A and service B would count as a single span. What? I can't. I, I do. I do not understand. Friends, now let's understand different types of distributed tracing tools. The distributed tracing tools can be classified into three types, like code tracing tool. These tools are used to trace the line of code, variable declared, output, etc., and will help in a code analysis and diagnostic. Examples of such tools are Open Tracing, Open Zipkin, App Dash, etc. Second type of tool is data tracing tool. These tools will be traced by validating the critical data element and monitoring them with the process control. Some examples of data tracing tools are Datadog, Jagger, New Relic, and Dynatrace. Most organizations use one of these tools as they provide a lot of insight into metrics. Third type of tool is program tracing. Program trace, ptrace, a program or a stack trace is an index of instructions executed and data referenced during the running of an application. The information displayed in a program trace includes the program name, language, and source statement that was executed among other data and is used in the process of debugging an application. There are a lot of tools available in the market and the tools should be selected based on the need of the team. The main aim of these tools should be to focus on golden signals of monitoring, namely latency, traffic, errors, and saturations. Then based on the response, error, and durations matrix, we can set up alerts to notify the team when something goes wrong or some metric level it's breach. <laughs> no. Now let's understand the distributed tracing with the log aggregator tool. By implementing the transaction ID and creating a timestamp of each log entry that contains that ID, you can take advantage of log aggregating tool such as IBM Cloud Log Analysis or Splunk. These tools provide a distributed stack trace of the steps that lead to a failure of a specific transaction. In these tools, we can search the trace ID across the logs from multiple microservices and see how the journey has begun and went through multiple services. We can analyze the time taken by each and every call and we can deep dive into error where it failed. So this is very important information. These tools are very useful tool and without the log aggregator tool, distributed tracing is of no use. Really? I... Okay friends, so now let's understand what are the use cases of distributed tracing design pattern. Use this pattern whenever the request is being served by multiple services and wants a trace ID to debug the flow. Use this design pattern to debug a single request across the services and application. Use the design pattern for the log aggregator tool whenever you want to analyze and see how the journey has gone through multiple services. Oh wow, that is really, that's amazing. Okay friends, so now what are the advantages of this distributed tracing design pattern? It provides us end-to-end -end visibility of user requests across the entire system of microservices. This design pattern provides information about service dependencies. This design pattern also provides information about metrics and observability. This design pattern also provides resiliency when the system encounters a failure. Oh, pretty wow! Okay friends, now let me summarize what we learn in this tutorial today. I gave you introduction of distributed tracing design pattern. Then I explain you a difference between 
the logging and distributed tracing. Then I explained you a microservice with and without distributed tracing design pattern. Then I gave you a real world example of distributed tracing design pattern. Then I also explained you at different types of distributed tracing design patterns. Then I explained you the use case of distributed tracing design pattern. And we also understood the advantages of distributed tracing design pattern. So friends, let me know if you have used this design pattern in your project or seen a scenario where this pattern can be very useful. Please provide your answer in the comment section of this video. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Good plan. Good talk. All right. Friends, in the next video, I'm going to cover health check design pattern. I'll explain you what is health check design pattern. I'll also show you and give you a real world example of health check design pattern. I'll explain the use cases of health check design pattern and also we'll understand the benefits of health check design pattern. So stay tuned for the next video and keep watching Code One Digest. If you're new to our channel, so please do subscribe to our channel to grow. Code One Digest family. Friends, if you like this video, so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for the more interesting videos. Click on the bell icon for the latest video notifications and do not forget to share this video with all your friends and colleagues. This is very useful information for students, beginners, and software engineers. I am putting a lot of efforts in creating this content. So please help me growing the Code One Digest family. Please subscribe to Code One Digest channel for the latest programming and technology related videos. Thank you.